college football. Skip Bayless, Paul Feinbein, shut your mouth. The big story for five, LSU at number eight, Florida State. Stephen A. Smith, he hasn't told the truth in 20 years. Abo Sweeney, the head coach at Clemson. There's a five-star quarterback. Georgia is number one. Colorado. The college football rankings are all wrong. Welcome back to the channel. It's good to be with you as always. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the like, subscribe, and share button. We really appreciate that. I mean, we see the statistics that about 80% of you watch daily or regularly, but you haven't subscribed yet. Just go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're watching, and we'd really appreciate that. And then get into the comment sections and let us know what you think because we really care about what you think. All right, so subscriber of the day is going to be The Bike. We're having a little discussion on the 49ers or the Eagles. Who's better? Who's the better running back in the league? McCaffrey, that type of thing. So I appreciate your comments there, Lee. Now, on to the college football top 10 rankings. This is really confusing to me, to everyone else. There doesn't really seem to be a clear-cut favorite as to who the top uh, team is or who is in the top 10. It's fluctuating so much, but here's my take on what I see. Okay, we're gonna start at 10 with Oregon. Now, Oregon really hasn't beaten anybody. I mean, they beat Texas Tech, they beat Hawaii. Their best win was against Colorado and that super hype matchup. And since then, they've looked bland, ordinary, nothing special. So even though they had a great win, it's been a few weeks, we're gonna keep them at 10. At nine, we're gonna go Oklahoma. They just had a really big win, but that's their only win of the year of any consequence. And just like Oregon, you know, it's not a lot on the resume to say that they're really a top 10 school or that they really can be number one or win it all. It just says they had one good performance and that's it. The teams are doing that all over the top 10 and all over the country. Okay, then we're gonna move on to number eight, and that's USC. USC hasn't beaten anyone. I mean, a lot of cupcakes, you know, Caleb Williams is looking good, and their best win was against Colorado. So you're starting to get a theme here. Colorado is really the benchmark for all of these programs so far, you know? So if that's your best win, maybe you can't knock Colorado down as far as you think. You know, they might be lurking right outside the top 25 if these teams are in the top 10 and their best win is against Colorado. You're gonna have to keep that in, in mind. So then we're gonna move on to number seven. Doesn't change for me, Michigan. They have beaten no one all year long. Yeah, we all know the talent and everything, but until they get out there and really get into the big battle game and they gotta fight it out with somebody, I'm leaving them at the back end. Seven is where they are and I'm not moving them. All right, number six is gonna be Texas. Texas had their signature win. They beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Big time, prime time game. And since then, nothing. I mean, they're winning, they're winning easily, but against cupcakes. And let's face it, you know, Alabama is not the biggest threat in the world this year. Uh, they really don't have a passing scheme or a passing offense. Um, you know, they're just struggling as an identity. So if that was their best win, then we can keep them in the top 10, but they don't say uh, playoff to me, they just say contender. Then we're gonna move on to number five. Number five is gonna be the University of Washington. Now, of course, they have a solid head coach. They have a Heisman candidate at quarterback, Michael Penix Jr., and he's really performing well. They're winning, and they're winning consistently, and they're winning by good margins. Not struggling here, but not against any top tier team. They just haven't played one yet. But they've got uh, Oregon, uh, Utah, SC. They got schools like this in the Pac-12 that they're going to have to see pretty soon. So once we get one of those games underneath their belt, we're really going to know where Washington stands. So right now, with the strength on their coach, 
the ease in which they win, uh, the point totals which they're putting up and having a high spin quarterback candidate, we're going to leave them at five. Number four, we're going to go to Florida State. Now, Florida State had that key matchup win against LSU early in the season. Big time game. They showed up five versus number eight and gave it to them. Got to tip your hat to that. That's a signature win. Since then, it hasn't been much at all. Some cupcakes. But then they did go on the road to Clemson and was in a battle. Dad Bo Sweeney had them boys playing and they gave Florida State a, a lot to handle and Florida State pulled it out. So with one and a half to maybe two signature wins for Florida State, we're going to move them into that spot right there. Okay, with the third spot in the poll this week, it's going to be Penn State. Now, Penn State is just handling their business. Uh, nothing fancy, nothing over the top that says, wow, look at me. But the defense plays solid. James Franklin, the head coach, is solid. He's he's just putting out great product year in and year out. The quarterback is doing all that he can do. Uh, the defense, the special teams, they got everything you want. They're winning consistently. No big-time blowouts. But they beating who's on the schedule and they beating them easily. They beat number 24, Iowa. You know, they beat Illinois. These are some good big time, big 10 schools. And so they handle their business and we're gonna keep it right there at number three. Now this time, there is no number two in my poll. Yeah, there's no number two in the rankings this week. The number one team in the country is going to be Georgia and Ohio State, 1A and 1B. And that's just simply because Georgia is the two-time defending national champ and they are undefeated, but they are standing on one and a half legs and wobbling. I mean, the competition just seems like it's too much for them to bear some points. Now they have a lot of talent all over the place. Offensive line, defensive line, linebackers, safeties, uh, you know, the running game. You know, they have the head coach with all the experience and, how, and how, you know, how to help them, you know, grow and learn and how to win. It, but it's a lot of smoke and mirrors there. They're struggling against teams that they should be beaten easily. And it's because of Beck, the quarterback. Poor play there, average play at best. And then you have Ohio State. No one really expected them to be where they are. They thought it would be somebody else like Michigan. But Ohio State is fooling people. They have their signature win against Notre Dame on the road at Notre Dame in a night primetime game, and they pull that out. Their young quarterback, McCord, starting to show that he can play in big games and under pressure, and especially on the road. Now, you match Ohio State with, Alabama, uh, with, uh, excuse me, with Georgia, and there's no mismatch whatsoever. Wide receivers, you're probably going to get that to Ohio State. The running game, you might even give that to Ohio State. Some of the defensive line, you probably get that to Georgia. The linebackers, you, you might give that to Georgia. The cornerbacks, uh, maybe a 50-50 split, or you could lean a little bit towards Ohio State. I mean, this just seems like a pretty even matchup here. Just like last year, where they played all the way down to the wire for the field goal to win. So, there you have it. No number two team in this week's poll, but you have a tie for number one. Georgia and Ohio State. My top ten college football rankings at number ten. Oregon is going to be number ten. Oklahoma is going to be number nine. USC is going to be number eight. Michigan is going to be number seven. Texas is going to be number six. Washington is number five. Florida State is number four. Penn State is number three. There is no number two in this week's ranking at all. And number one is going to be a tie between Georgia and Ohio State. That's this week's top 10 college football top 10 rankings. Jump in the comments and let me know what you think. Please hit the like, subscribe, and share button.